Comic-Con was just published um, last week, it just came out called On the Material, and uh, this is the new book, that's where I'll, I'll read from. Uh, it's in three parts, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to read one poem from the first part, and that's going to be a long serial poem, um, one part from the middle, and then a, a slightly longer, longer poem from the end. Um, so, the first poem is called Let Me Speak Clearly. Although well, really it's sort of a, a head note to a serial that begins right after it. We were in the last days of the poem, sun glinting off countless new and identical condo towers, hand around the warmth of gourmet coffee, car idling at the curb. We were wondering what could still be said about the reality of cities, building facade and street, murmuring walls and oppressive corners, and lost within the petrified world some lone figures in perpetual motion. Or take these brashly made up dolls, carcasses, loose heads and body parts, the extinct architectures of a public's window sphere, restoration world. Crate and Barrel, John Lubbock. Sign outside a glittering bank tower. Jump, you fuckers! Molten money running in the gutters. Some other clampdown we'd rather not work for, but probably will. A sphere of dreams of outdated ecologies. Give me needy storms of action. That far science takes us. Something outside the free speech zone the safe assembly area. We were anxious about the market of everything, about the sound of our voices in the cavernous dome, the birds and trees we'd make note of, our normally articulate mouths splayed across the big screen. This was just a few days ago. The wind across the pages of our pre-digital expressions, a tomahawk, a missile to our chests, plane wing dinner fork, something dead but still dominant. We were killing them softly. The planet sighed. None of this and all of this found its way into the poem. We were people poking around the wreckage. No one had read the reports. No one replied. I should say that that poem and that, that whole series that begins are, are mostly lines taken from uh, well, a lot of it is lines taken from other contemporary poets, and, and there's actually quite a bit of Walter Benjamin in that one, I think. Mm -hmm. And Ben Lawson's sort of local to Vancouver, where I'm from. All right. Um, since we're at a Robert Duncan oh, fest of a kind, uh, there's a poem that's got a, a, a title with a nod to Robert Duncan, obviously. It's called Poem Beginning with the Title of Side Twan Lee Painting. <laughs> Fifty days at Ilium, writing a small dictionary of debts, recollecting recompense, the structural epic, how we, any of us, depopulate scorn, throwing contingency up on the wounds ethics wears, or take from a poem, small candle, window worn, to speak into tongues most fervent, wry whisper, or voices valence. Look, it shook Secrets from our agents who were who wore mirth like a salient whim or chipped sugar on the lark's backs to swoop from romantic peers and stupid like we weren't ninjas swooping into politics, <laughs> pretending farce and forced open our popular throats to plead against Dana murders plunder or <laughs> and forced open our ocular throats to bleed against gain and murder's plunder board. Or like this painting, where each brush stroke is borrowed from another, or tightly coiled in canvas, the culture chirps. In another tree, languages, links, everything stolen is free to form affinity, frames, light, and pure colorists, divine ardor as a way of being oneself in another's delicate skin. This is to be reiteration, echo, quote, figure, trope, troubled lyric, kind of 
hear me, now pointillism is my point. To make a mend in rent fabrics, torn of voice, scattered and weathered versions thereof. Every poem written as after, subsumed but not barren debts, laughter as origin, propertyless press. Thus, like a fire that consumes all before it, and eagle drops, skies, scars, and palace, fierce, drives where it thickest, making war of poems, without fame fled to paint rages, as ages hence we are still standing up, precipice treed, to overlook our anger's destructions, or boil our debt's oil. All right.